as with other uh, systemic malignancies, you know, immunotherapy, the promise of immunotherapy was, uh, you know, enormous in the field of brain tumors. Uh, there certainly have, you know, were initial case reports of people with dramatic responses. Uh, and so an entire raft of studies over really a decade or more looking uh, initially at sort of vaccine type approaches, either dendritic cell vaccine or more traditional, you know, uh, targeted, uh, uh, targeted antigen targeted vaccines, lots of creative uh, approaches were tried, and, and one after another, those studies turned out to be negative um, and, and disappointing. And then we also entered the era where immune checkpoints became available, and so those studies were, were done both in the newly diagnosed um, uh, high-grade glioma setting and in the recurrent setting. And again, after a number of years and lots of hype and excitement, those, those studies also came to fruition and all of them were negative. And so to date, um, what we've seen are, I would say, sort of a, a slight tail on the curve in many of these studies, some anecdotal, you know, small numbers of patients who seem to respond better than average, but that's, you know, we're talking about a very small minority of patients. And so there, there hasn't been a real, um, demonstration that immune-based approaches are going to be valuable and useful in gliomas. Now, having said that, an enormous amount of work then went into looking at uh, glioma tumor microenvironment and the immunosuppressive nature and what was known and then what's been amplified in terms of our understanding is, you know, gliomas, particularly glioblastomas, set up an amazingly immunosuppressive microenvironment. They, um, they transition macrophages into a phenotype that's immunosuppressive. Um, they, uh, there are relatively few tumor-specific antigens, and many of those may or may not be driver mutation uh, that, you know, if we target them, we see great effects on, on, on stopping tumor growth. And so there's a, there is a, um, uh, and then, you know, there's systemic immunosuppression. We, we, we and others demonstrated a number of years ago through the Brain Tumor Consortium that our current therapies, uh, corticosteroids, radiation therapy, cytotoxics like temozolomide, induce uh, an absolute lymphocytopenia that can be long lasting for months to even a year in the adjuvant setting. And a significant percentage of those patients actually had CD4 counts of 200 or, or lower, so severe, what used to be an AIDS-defining uh, level of, uh, of lymphocytopenia and T helper cells. And so we know we have that as a, if we're trying to recruit lymphocytes to fight tumors, yet we don't have lymphocytes um, around, that's, that's another problem in, in glioma, really somewhat specific to gliomas. And then uh, finally, also these patients are patients are often on, require glucocorticoids to control cerebral edema, peritumoral edema, and we know all about the immunosuppressive effects of steroids. Uh, so you have this perfect storm of some treatment-related things, uh, long and short term, that that cause an immunosuppressive state. You have a, a tumor that's smart enough to convince the microenvironment, "Hey, we want to want to repel all invading, uh, you know, immune cells, and don't let them come here." And so it turns out that it's just going to be a tougher nut to crack. And I think people are starting to make advances in understanding. Uh, some of the pathways that are downregulated in the microenvironment and starting to come up with strategies to uh, maybe overcome those. So I think uh, a prediction that, uh, you know, hopefully I'll, I'll live long enough to see is that immune therapy will, in fact, be a big part of what we do for brain tumors down the road. But it won't be as simple as giving an immune checkpoint you know, uh, PD-1, PD-L-1. Um, it will be combinations of therapy. It will be uh, approaches that manipulate the microenvironment and then generate antigens and then downregulate the immune system. So I think it's just going to have to be a little bit more sophisticated approach and one that works not only systemically, but really at the tumor site, protected by a blood-brain barrier, et cetera. So I, I'm optimistic we're going to get there. And there's, again, a whole wave of newer studies looking at very novel approaches and uh, novel vaccination approaches and oncolytic viruses and uh, uh, you know uh, intratumoral delivery of agents. So there's an ex extraordinary array of approaches that are being tried 
all that are a little, you know, sort of second, third generation kind of immune approaches. Um, and I'm, I'm optimistic that those will, um, that those will work. I, I will say there are some studies ongoing and lots of reports that in those rare patients who have germline mismatch repair deficiency, et cetera, those patients do actually seem to have a response to uh, our, our current group of uh, immune checkpoint inhibitors and PD-L1, PD-1 inhibitors. So there's there's some uh, utility of those agents in a very small group of patients. What we're trying now, and, and again, lots of people in the field, both on the basic science end and in the clinic are trying to, to generate these more sophisticated approaches and, and novel approaches to using immune-based therapies sort of in the context of a broader group of therapies targeted these tumors.